Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Carmen. Welcome to my house in Morocco. Entrez. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Carmen Haidt. I'm a vintage curator and welcome to my house in Morocco. We're here in Marrakesh in the desert. So I love coming to Morocco because it's such a different world to the Western world, even though Morocco is one of the mo most modern and modernized countries in Africa, but it is a different continent and you have a complete idea of switching off, which I really like. So it's already, there's, there's an air of possibility in Morocco that you have nowhere else and you have a complete tranquility in this area and the property where I am because you have, com you're completely exposed to nature. I mean, you could see today's changes from within five minutes, you can have a sandstorm. Um, you see all the different colors of the spectrum of the universe here. So it's pretty spectacular. I come here for rejuvenation and for relaxation as well as for work. It's a very interesting place to work. There are a lot of opportunities here and I like to collaborate with a lot of interesting Moroccan artists and creatives with there's a whole new generation here that's emerging and it's super exciting. The idea of this house was I wanted to have a re refuge in the desert, sort of off the grid, where nobody can find me. I'm not sure if that's possible at these days, but it's pretty good because I'm very remote and I'm in the desert, but I'm close to proximity to Marrakesh Medina, which is uh, about half an hour away. It's fantastic. So the idea was to have this house as a family retreat. And also I rent it out when I don't use it. Um, and it's been pretty amazing. So my family really likes it. I come here with friends. I come here to work and I built also a little studio at the back of the house, which is sort of a showroom now. And this has a bit of a Marfa kind of in the desert feel. And the house itself has been built in a U shape. So when I acquired the house, it was, I really liked it because there's no electricity here. So the whole house has been run as a sustainable form of living. So we use raw materials and really local materials. And also I didn't know when I first came to Morocco that Morocco is now the leading country of solar energy. And so I thought, why don't we just run this house solar only so I don't draw electricity from the city. And so I have my own solar panels, I have my own water and I have my own vegetables soon enough, I think. This is the hallway. When you write, when you come in, I'm sticking to the Moroccan tradition to have a picture of the king. In Morocco has a kingdom. And um, this is a vintage picture of King Mohammed V. And I found it in the market. It's vintage. I think it's super cool. And so I want to stick to the tradition and pay honor to Her Majesty. So this is the living room and um, it's one lateral vast space that originally was, it was actually, it was two rooms and we broke it through and made it one big space. So it's, we put all the beautiful ceiling in and then you have two sections where you have the one area with the fireplace and then sort of more a cozy corner. And actually here where you see the artwork, there used to be four windows that I closed and now I have the artwork of my friend Idris Kanachi, who is an amazing artist. Um, and he did these artworks here. And this is an incredible piece, which I found in the market um, years ago. And it's actually a real photograph. It's a negative print and it has been treated. And I found it on the market. It's very interesting. I had it framed and I took it to London. <laughs> And then when I moved here, I brought it back here. So it, it, Marrakesh stays in Marrakesh. And I like it because it has the palm trees. And then here we see the big sofas. I love the sort of volume of it because I was inspired when um, Christian Dior did a show here a few years ago. And then um, Sufyan Zarib, who did the amazing sofas and then was inspired and said, I do think you can make me these sofas for my house. 
So he ended up doing these sofas for my house. And these are traditional, the pillows on there are traditional henna cushions and with a sort of traditional henna stamp. So they are all really um, from the area here. So I try to use natural materials. So everything in the house has been made bespoke, which is fantastic because there's so much great handcraftsmanship here in Morocco. And so for instance, the wool puffs, um, we produce them here. And then you have the straw mats on the floor. Um, they're all vintage. I really like raw clay. Um, and then here, they sort of like the, I like the unfinished look, but it actually works quite well in the space. And I like to mix it up with the vintage pieces that I have. For instance, I have this beautiful um, ashtray. It's uh, actually Hermès uh, and it's Leo. It's my star sign. So must be lucky. And I love also books, you know, like I have a lot of artist friends. For instance, Hassan has such. He's an amazing Moroccan artist. He has uh, his gallery here. And um, I also love, of course, Bill Willis. He's this amazing uh, architect. He used to build uh, Yves Saint Laurent's villas. And here I love also the traditional arts and craftsmanship of Morocco. So that's a beautiful book, actually. Here are a selection of fans which I quite like you know it's nothing expensive but it's just so pretty these you know fans especially in this hot weather we need it um, and then here in this area which is really nice I brought this chair actually um, from London but there are antique and they're vintage and these are all posters Isselon um, posters from the Jardin Majorelle so Morocco, living in Morocco is really great because you have fantastic weather conditions. And so the indoor-outdoor living is quite important. So we have doors, the glass doors, and it's quite nice because you sort of like feel indoor-outdoor. Immediately from the living room, you're transported to outdoor. And so you have the view and it's quite cinematic. So that's what I really like about it. So this is the dining room. We're going to have lunch today. And often this is house is also used as an artist exchange. I have sometimes artists in residence. This is Amal and Malika, our fantastic chef, and Amal, the heart of the house. And we have delicious food here that we cook. Lots of vegetarian options. It does a thousand way how to cook vegetables in Morocco. And that's just a, a small little glimpse of what we do here in the house. And I'm going to sit down now for lunch and have a, a little break and see you after the lunch. So the idea of this room was it's a dining room, but you have also the built-in banquettes, which is quite nice. So before lunch or dinner, you can just hang out here, have a little aperitif and chill out before it's time to eat. And um, I really like the views because you have two vintage saddle blankets framed. They're quite antique, quite actually kind of museum pieces, really like the intrinsic detail of the leather and the brocade and the metallic thread that they, that they were done. Now I want to talk to you about this little collaboration that I did with this fantastic new brand called Coup de Soleil here in Morocco. And it's a little smoking tray or a little trinket box and uh, a tray that we did in collaboration with Coup de Soleil made out of brass. So you have little boxes here, different sizes. And I quite like the detail here with the swirls. So throughout the house, you'll find these vintage stacking tables. This one is from the 70s. It's tiled. I really like the look. It's quite uh, retro. And then that works really well with this vintage lamp. It's a Louis Calf lamp that I had restored. And I love this animal vase, I suppose. You can put single stems of flowers in there, but I quite like to have it like this. It's quite pretty. So this is the outdoors terrace, which is kind of where we live most of the time, except in August and in July when it's extremely hot. But it's just wonderful because this house has an unprecedented view, 360 degrees view of the Atlas Mountains. I can see the sunrise, the sunset. 
it's a whole natural spectacle here and I've seen eclipses, it's just wonderful. And I just love to wake up and have the feeling to be in the middle of the nature, which we are. So naturally this space, it was built as a U form, as a U shaped uh, property. And in this sort of courtyard that you see here is the beautiful table, but it's actually, these are two vintage doors that are made into a table. Um, and you can seat quite a large number of people. It's sort of the centerpiece for entertainment during the day and the evening. We can set it up really nicely. So this is a wonderful piece by my dear friend Laurence. She has this fantastic brand LRNCE. She makes incredible ceramics, beautiful furniture and also clothes. And that was a house gift from her. And I tend to fill it with the olive branches from the grounds. And so, as I said, this table, wood is a living material. So sometimes it shrinks, sometimes it expands. So we've got to keep an eye on it, but it's usually, it's, we, we did it on this big iron stands and it normally works quite well for a big party here. So there have been quite some terrace parties here. Sometimes I have a DJ who comes here on outdoors. So I started my career in the 90s um, working with, alongside Mr. Saint Laurent and I was a PR assistant, I was quite young back then. It was really exciting, I was living and breathing fashion. I was always based in London, I was in Paris a lot and of course he was a big inspiration when I came to Morocco. Um, which was back in the day as well. It was even before I was working for Saint Laurent, I was working as a model. And I came here originally for a shoot. So I came here to Marrakesh for, for a photo shoot and with a photographer called Sammy Hart, who is still an amazing photographer today in Germany. And he does a lot of incredible work. So I, went, I came here with Sammy and I thought, what is this place? It's just like, it's bonkers. It's kind of like, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, we don't have this in Europe and um, India is very far away. It's like, well, maybe one day if I have the opportunity, I'd like to come here and explore this further. And then I started to work for Monsieur Saint Laurent. And then he, of course, has a, he had a house here, several places. And that was a really big inspiration for me to come here and explore the territory further. And I've been coming here for about 30 years now on and off. So follow me to the pool. I just redid the pool in this very nice, smooth kind of, I think it's called Dynabrite material that's really lovely to stand on. And during the day, this actually is also a perfect spot for home office, believe it or not. So I have this little island that I kept. It's a bit 80s, but I like to sit here with my laptop and have a glass of water and just really enjoy the view and the scenery while I'm doing work. Um, and here are, around the pools we have fragrant plants. So we have geraniums, we have lavender, we have mint and we have lemon verbena. So these are all natural herbs that they are very common here in Morocco and the verbena tea terveven is fantastic. It's also called Luisa in Morocco. So here we have the Graminé, which is the lovely grass that grows really fast here. We cut it usually in the month of January. It's cut really down and look, it's already, I mean, it grows within three months. It grows really fast, but it's so beautiful. And when you have the wind, it just have, you have the melody of the wind and the grass. And I really like it, the contrast, the soft to the desert. And it's just magnificent, all the colors here. Morocco is very inspiring for not just its heritage, but also for the colors. So anybody who's really into photography in the arts and creative world will really like it here. I love it most about my home in Morocco is being exposed to nature. It's such a luxury to be in the middle of the desert to living in such luxury where I have my duvet and the sandstorm is outside. It's a pretty amazing feeling. I also really love the Yes, to be exposed to the elements, because the sandstorm, as I said, can come up in five minutes. 
uh, I have every scenario under my eyes in front of my terrace. It's when we live in cities, we're pretty much disconnected from nature. And what this allows me to come here in this home is to really be immersed in nature and it makes it all relevant what's really important. Well, let's follow me to the office. This is a super fun vintage film poster that I found here in Marrakesh as well. It's a Vigilante, um, a film by Stanley Donan. Um, and then actually here, when you go to the office, I have this amazing vintage door that I repainted. And uh, voila, so here you can see my workspace. I love this place because it gives me a lot of cre creativity and inspiration. Um, this is a wonderful desk I found. It's vintage. It's a, a vintage airport desk from Kenya, actually, from the 20s. Love it. Um, and on it, there are some little objects. This is a beautiful ceramic lidded um, box by Laura Boeing. She's a friend of mine. She's actually quite collectible. She does a lot of amazing furniture now. I have also this beautiful Art Deco vase that I had from England and this trolley. It's a modernist trolley from the 50s and this beautiful sort of concave mirror. Um, I also love in particular these little trinkets which is a um, smoking set by Hermès. Um, it's vintage, it's from the 1940s. I also love here at my little boxes and vases. So this is again Lara Boeing who made the other um, lidded box. And uh, also, for instance, this um, light here is really beautiful with um, this, this three way, this three colorway, which is red, black and white and it just makes it a really good juxtaposition so you see the red black and white on the bowl here and you can see the graphic lines here in this um, office now Yves Saint Laurent was a big inspiration of course because of when I used to work with him back in the day so you see a portrait of him here um, and then there's also a portrait of Paco Rabanne back in the day there's also a po um, portrait of Catherine Deneuve painted by uh, David Downton, a fantastic um, British illustrator. When Monsieur Saint Laurent uh, decided to auction off his house uh, in Rue Babylone, this chair was for sale. And uh, it was quite incredible. It had this most astronomical um, sum that he went for, but I, I tried a bit and it was <laughs> I was successful. But. Um, so my friend in England, Evandro, who has a wonderful upholstery business, said, oh, why don't I make this chair for you? And I had this incredible um, vintage leopard, real leopard fur coat, which I couldn't sell. I don't have a certificate. So I said, okay, let's make a chair. So we actually made this chair and it's a total identical replica of the original Saint chair. And funnily enough, if you can see um, you here, it's in the auction catalog. I can show you. Um, here you can see the chair and uh, it's really beautiful. It's actually perfect. Voila. So this is the living room, first floor salon. It's been inspired by Pierre Cardin, the Palais Boule in south of France. And I just love the idea of space age. I really love the bubble and the shapes and the silhouette and the form of that time. And there were actually in this room, there were windows that I closed up and I built this fireplace instead. And I love built-in seating because it kind of leads itself to have great friends and parties and entertainment in the house. And this is a wonderful space because I was not quite sure how we should light the room. So we have, of course, a dome, which is lovely because we have the suspension lamp that has is a vintage that has been modified to fit this space and then i actually designed the little light features on the side which are perforated ostrich eggs you can find them here but of course we did the design and then i um, worked with a really lovely brass atelier here because the brass and hand craftsmanship is really incredible here in morocco and um, 
designed those little appliques, the wall appliques for the room. And then to follow the, the shape of the bonquettes, I thought it was quite nice to work with natural material. Again, I talked about Tadalac before, and here you have a whole room covered in Tadalac, which is the limestone. And I like this terracotta idea because Marrakesh is the city, the red city. It is surrounded by the red wall and also I like quite like to blend in here in the desert and so that's why we kept the color tones quite neutral in this space and use natural materials like limestone, like wool and the pillows that all have been, they all have been handmade like hand crochet, hand wool made. Now for the coffee table I went to the flea market and I found this incredible iron structure and it's like, oh, it would be actually really perfect to make it into a coffee table. So I just put a big sort of glass on top and voila, here we go. You see also another lidded box from a ceramic box from Lara Boeing, that, similar to what we had in the office before. And this massive space age ashtray um, that's basically not in use, but I think it looks really lovely for decoration. And it works quite well because this has and it's an indoor-outdoor situation. So you have the living room, the salon, that leads straight into the terrace outside, which I use for yoga, which is perfect, perfect hangout during hot summer days. So let's go and have a look. So this is the outdoor terrace, which I love to use all year round. I do yoga here. It has a magnificent view. You see the Atlas Mountains, again, 360 degree views. And it's just really pleasant to hang out because it's a shaded area and I love the idea of the long curtains that you can, you know, sort of ha have them hang down. And again, we have the big sofas like downstairs in the living room. They're sort of spacious and really comfortable. And I found these incredible Seliger pots. Uh, here in Marrakesh. It's quite unusual to find Seliger pots structured like this. It's quite a lot of work. Seliger is then again another um, traditional handcraftsmanship here in Morocco, which is a tiled inlay. And I tried actually to reproduce these pots and it hasn't been easy to find in atelier, so I'm still on the search, but these are vintage ones and I really love the, the look of them. Let's go upstairs to the first floor. Welcome to the Red Room. In this room, I wanted to have actually every room to have something special. So I built in this little corner that wasn't here before. And I inherited these terrible brown wooden doors that I didn't know quite what to do with it. And then I found this incredible painter who did um, restorations for the Islamic Museum of Art. And I sort of gave him free reign. I said, you know, can you, can you keep it to the color of red? And that's what he came up with. And I said, he did a brilliant job. I love all the hand painting and the craftsmanship in this room. So you can see all the detail, everything is hand painted, so beautiful, all the color. And then I had this incredible Sutani piece, which was a Turkish vintage piece I had in my cupboards for years and I did not quite know what to do and I thought oh it may, it, may, it may look good as a headboard so here we go we made it into a headboard and then I liked the attention to detail because for instance here then the bed sheets we all make everything here in Morocco you know have the beautiful little embroidery lining and all the little details here and the pom-poms so everything has been handmade you can see also here for instance this funnily enough I found this bookshelf in a flea market here and I thought oh it's perfect it works really well in the space and then I have my it houses now my vintage collection of Carl May books which is really old I think is from the 50s so actually the hand craftsmanship continues in this bathroom which is really lovely because you have all the details and here I have fossil sinks which means there's you know Morocco or what this part where we are desert used to be sea so you find a lot of fossils here and a lot of amazing stones so I decided to keep these sinks in fossil marble and as I said these inherited doors they immediately get new life when you paint them and with this beautiful pattern so voila. Well let's go to the Suite Africain 
which is the African squid. And so it's been uh, inspired by actually this piece, which is a vintage map of Africa that I found here in a store. And it's quite incredible because you actually can see the formation of Africa really back in the day. And it sort of inspired the color palette of this room. It's like, okay, well, if it's the sweet African, so we need to do African patterns. And so I came up with the color palette, which was actually inspired by these um, plates on the wall, these basket plates. And then so we came up with this pattern and then I found this headboard on the bed that sort of matched the whole idea. Um, and it's also really fun, these lamps, these bed bedside lamps, I found actually the actual lamp, which is ceramic, and the shade afterwards. And so I kind of, it was actually a vase. And it's like, oh, let's just make lampshades out of it. And so that, that's the bedside table. Um, it took me a few years to find the right fabric for this beautiful blackout blind. But it works really well in the space now with everything together. And so these are actually old vintage chairs from a chalet in Austria. In here we have vintage rugs that I found in the Berber mountains. And I also found this here, which is a desert rose. We have a, rock of, a lot of rock formations here in Morocco and in the desert, which is incredible. You have to come and visit it. You find these incredible formations. They're out of stone and they are formed. It's called a desert rose and you can find them. So I found them here in Morocco. So here, let's go into the bathroom. You have an ensuite bathroom also in the African suite here. Same principle as in the Chambre Rouge. We have the, we had these doors that they had to be repainted or exchanged. So I always prefer to use the existing and I prefer to recycle materials and give them a new life. And again, we work with the same art uh, restorer who does restorations, restorations for the Islamic Museum of Art here in Marrakesh. And we kept the original idea of the fossil marble sinks, which I think works quite well in the space here, together with the painting and the hand craftsmanship. The room has been done in Tadelact. Tadelact is a traditional craftsmanship in Morocco, and it's a very smooth sort of limestone texture that you put on, and it's very nice in bathrooms, on the floors. And so we did the bathrooms in the Tadelact, as well as downstairs in the dining room area, you'll see all the rooms in Tadelact. So this is the yellow room, and it has the mirror image of the Chambre Rouge. I wanted to have something special, so I have this little alcove here that we made. And for the same, same principle here, I inherited these boring wooden doors and I wanted to have something different to the red room and to the African suite. So I just thought, why don't I give the painter a pattern of the Wiener Werkstatt and he can interpret, interpret himself how it would look like maybe Moroccan style. So and that's what he came up with. I thought it's absolutely wonderful, really en point. And he did beautiful patterns that I didn't need to change anything. So I'm very happy about it. And then I teamed it up with traditional techniques here in Morocco. We have also a lot of embroidery. So all of this has been handmade. All of the embroidered sofas, the pillows, and actually what well, this African chair has a pillow, a vintage pillow of Saint Laurent from the 60s. This orange metal cabinet I found here on the fleet market and I just thought it was perfect, it would work in the room. It's a bit of a worn down look but I quite like it. So this is a funny little mascot which is a dog by Erdem that is a, who is a fantastic fashion designer in England and he did this a few years ago. He did a collection in this fabric and he made me a little dog. So voila, he's here and here we have a vintage 1970s Murano glass vase that I like very much, and also those Mexican tiger heads that are really beautiful. They're from the 60s. I found them also in the market. 
and I have this fantastic artwork which is done by Nick Hornby who is another friend of mine in London who is now a fantastic renowned sculptor and who does public commissions all over the country. For the headboard I had no idea at the beginning what to put here and I had this I came with England from England with this vintage paravent this green that I didn't quite know what to do it's from the 20s and it just plonked it there and it actually looks quite good and it stayed there ever since. And I teamed it up with these sort of vintage lights, again glass lights from the 60s, which look quite chic and it, it works in the room. Together with macrame and natural materials, it's a really lovely space again. So here we continue in the bathroom, the beautiful craftsmanship, Atelier Meyer, Wiener Werkstatt meets Morocco and with the fossil sinks as, as well. And I love all the big products here from Botanica, who is a fantastic Moroccan brand I've done that collaboration with, and they are the best natural oils and materials. So I have them in all of the bathrooms and they really look pretty as well. And then I have also behind the corner, a beautiful poster, vintage airline poster from Air France. That's quite fun. I just thought, why not put it in the bathroom? So in 2007, I decided to launch Atelier Meyer, which was named after my late grandmother and inspired by the Wiener Werkstatt and the Viennese workshops, to launch an online business selling vintage luxury fashion and accessories online. So back then, basically nobody was doing this in Europe and it was a really exciting opportunity. And we were really growing quite fast. Within five years, we were selling to about 104 countries. I had a warehouse in London Bridge. I had concession in department stores and I did trunk shows all over the world. And it was really an exciting time. So then after about five years in Haven, in a Creative Haven, I decided to sell the business and concentrate on other ventures and then COVID happened and family affairs happened and I had to move from the UK and I decided last year to relaunch the business Atelier Meyer in the form again of an online boutique but actually as a physical studio here in Marrakesh selling vintage furniture and vintage objects and it actually really gives me a lot of pleasure because I, could, I still have this affiliation and I still have this passion for finding vintage things and making, giving them a new life. Um, as you can see with a lot of pieces in this house that they have been either found on the flea market or they have a history and I quite like it uh, to make it a personal affair. So this is the atelier that I built last year. It's sort of a bit of a folly to have a store in the middle of the desert but I quite like it because it's a bit of a Marfa feel. And when people come, they're actually really surprised what to find here because everything in here is for sale. These are vintage finds that I've collected here um, in stores, vintage dealers, at the flea market. Voila, let's have a look. So, as you can see, this is sort of like a bungalow style, which we use as a showroom, but also is an artist in residence atelier. So often we have artists in residence they come here and do the work. For instance, right now we're working on this very exciting project. So I have artist Marco Walker, who is American, half Austrian, and lives in England as well. He's actually taking space here right now to finish his work for this project. And um, here I can show you all the little pieces that we have curated. So for instance, this is an extraordinary piece, which is a, a knoll frame from the 60s that I have upholstered in this cream boucle fabric. Similar to this chair, it's an original Mark Held chair that I found here on the market. And I did the same thing, it's been upholstered absolutely new. This is my scent that I've just uh, collaborated with Botanica and the Mandarin Oriental. It's now their, our signature scent. It's inspired by Chamna Lefna, which is the big place here in Marrakesh. Now here, this is a collaboration I did with Benny Ruggs, an amazing rug company here based in Morocco, actually very close to my house. They have an extraordinary showroom and I did a collaboration with them for six carpets. And here, all of these, for instance, these chairs, these are fiberglass chairs, outdoors, 
but they also look pretty. And then I find these structures in the flea market, and I think they're quite interesting. Little side tables that I spray paint, painfully restore, and then they are for sale. This is a really beautiful lamp from the 1950s. And even here, you know, I like the art of entertaining. This is a little set, original set. It's still in its original packaging by Pierre Cardin, a little play card set. I also like to celebrate the art of the table. So here you have a little bit of silver, quite like this one, it's old, old school, where you can really brush the breadcrumbs off the table. And that's an original vase from the Wiener Werkstatt. It's quite rare. And you can see here the intrinsic pattern of all the details. And you have here made in Austria. Very nice. I really love this ball as well, for instance. It has this beautiful silhouette. Looks quite pretty on any mantelpiece. You can fill it with fruit. So pretty. Now this shelf actually is really lovely. I found it on the road, believe it or not. It's not for sale. I, lo I love the shape and I put some balls on the top. These are ceramic vases that I really like because the, when you, they're lit from inside to give a beautiful light. I have them in all shapes and sizes and we make things also to specification. So a lot of things that you see in the house inside has been made with the ateliers and I continue to work with ateliers on bespoke interior and projects all around the world. Home means to me a complete refuge from daily life, but also a place where you can recharge, where you can be yourself, where you can invite friends, where you can hang out, where you can work from. That's basically what home means for me. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.